everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are taking a closer look at a massive custom Lego creation. This is the USS Enterprise NCC-1701A from Star Trek. Technically, this is pretty much identical to the NCC-1701 refit edition, but in this episode, there is no point in getting into the history of all the different Star Trek ships. So suffice it to say, this is the Enterprise that you see in a lot of the original Star Trek movies. This ship held a crew of approximately 500. It was armed with photon torpedoes as well as phasers and went on all kinds of crazy missions and adventures exploring the galaxy. The Lego model that we are looking at right now was designed by Kevin J. Walter. It's just over 5,000 pieces and like everything that goes up in our web store it's just about the coolest version of uh, a USS Enterprise that pretty much exists within the custom building world. Right off the bat before I get into some of the closer details of this model I do want to say that you can get the building instructions and parts list from our web store that's www.brickvault.toys included with each purchase is a PDF step-by-step -step manual as well as a digital part list for uploading online so you can order the pieces you're going to need for this build instantaneously. And then in this last week, we also just decided to have a little bit of fun and Mike developed a uh, PDF file for some stickers. If you have uh, a printer and some sticker paper, you can add a few little extra bits of detailing here and there on the model where it actually makes sense to put them onto the Lego bricks. At the time of recording this video, this is Kevin's first build that he's put up on the web store and I highly recommend you check out the link in the description below. This is a great way to help support the channel as well as the talented designers that we work with. Now first thing is first, this is definitely a display model. The shape of Enterprise ships in LEGO has always been kind of a weird building challenge for so many designers throughout the years and to have made such an incredibly accurate and amazing looking uh, detailed model at this size in Lego bricks means that it definitely needs this stand to survive. In fact, the stand that you see below it is 100% part of the model. Aside from the T-800 uh, Terminator bust that we also have up in the web store, this is the only build that I've ever worked with that has a built-in stand as part of the uh, overall design. In this case, it's totally required. Those warp drive nacelles in the back simply could not hold themselves up in any logistical way when you've got so many bricks making all these amazing looking details. The only other brick built version of this model that I've seen roughly at the same size, not in pure digital form, came out as a Mega Bloks set. And the way they solved this particular nacelle problem uh, being so heavy is they just developed an entire super strong brick to make up 100% of the support structure. Obviously, Kevin did not have anything like that at his disposal when building this ship, so he did, I think, the next best thing, which is making a nice clean-looking stand with a consistent look throughout the bottom, which keeps up all of the important pieces of the model without them bowing. Also, uh, his model just looks better than the Mega Bloks one by a long shot, in my opinion. Now, getting into some of the nicer details of this model, let's take a closer look, starting at the back. We've already kind of shown some nicer shots of the nacelle warp drives. As you can see, the designer has altered the direction of the studs on all angles, which creates a pretty much studless, nearly studless build towards the back. You have some excellent combinations of slope pieces with the darker gray edges sticking out a little bit. They match up wonderfully with those tiled corner pieces in the very back. And of course you have those grill pieces inlaid a uh, plate inside. And this is the area of the ship that you usually glows a bit blue when it's uh, warping. When we get to the arms that attach these to the body, this is also a bit different from the TV show original version of the ship where they splay uh, outwards a little bit. They get a bit wider when they connect towards the engines and they also angle back quite a bit away from the uh, hull or away from the head of the ship. I think you can see the construction decently well here. There's essentially one solid layer of bricks that make up the structure here with studs on the sides of either of them that makes the plate detailing on the outside really lock down a very solid look for this part of the ship. Now that we're at the bottom, I gotta say I'm somewhat struck between which part of the build is my favorite. It's either between the secondary hull that we're looking at right now or possibly uh, the bridge and primary hull, really the head of the ship. But there is something just so special about how the deflector disc, that's the trans blue, was outlined so well with the circular light bluish gray detailing that wraps around the edge. 
edge. This specific spot on the ship is one of the areas that you absolutely have to get right if you really want the model to pop, especially at this scale. And I don't know how much there is that I can really say about it. I think the design here really speaks for itself. There is a little bit of that sticker detailing that we added just a few of those blue lights. And I don't know if it's worth saying right now, but the secondary hull here sticks in probably five or six studs with some Technic link arms into the center of the body. So it's really attached quite strongly. And also the neck part of the ship attaches quite strongly to the hull. Just like the build for the main sensor, this dish shape really has to look good if you want the whole model uh, to flow well. And I'm happy to say that the circular shape that Kevin, the designer, put together here is something, the build is something a little bit different compared to any of the large circular shapes that I've tried building myself in the past. It works so well, in fact, that I wonder if he first found a great shape for the dish in terms of the proper spacing with the wing plates as well as the tile pieces on the top and then scaled the rest of the build to sort of match up with a wonderful design for a primary hull. That would be my basic guess right off the top of my head because we have some excellent details that make up the edge that goes along the outer part of the rim with those gray and white plates that are stacked together as well as a relatively seamless or uniform white build that goes along the entire surface of the dish with slow staggering wing plates and tiles to make that gradual curve move up the body. That is not an easy look to accomplish, but when you get close to the bridge, that gradual sloping curve uh, has a pretty elegant outline. Now, in the beginning of this episode, I did say that this model was display only. You can see me moving it around on our white tables. The tables themselves are actually uneven, and the model still holds together pretty well, but this is the only time in which you can actually move the model in its completed state. When you have to pick it up and take it from one place to another, uh, it does require a little bit of disassembly. This, I think, makes the most sense. The model is just so incredibly heavy with the weight of that head. You can see when I shake it, uh, it is actually uh, quite wobbly, though nothing that feels like it's going to be falling over or popping up. You just don't want to slide the thing or jerk it around really, really uh, quickly on the table. That might tip it over, but I can't say that I've been treating this thing very gingerly. The only part of the build that I think is worth showing uh, when you disassemble is right here, the little connection between the engines and the arms. There's six studs of connecting right there and that's it. You just disconnect the arms in this little point. And sorry if I block the shot uh, ever so slightly, but I'm gonna take apart this ship in the way that you need to in order to actually have this thing uh, comfortably move around. The head is super strong, so all you have to do is pop it off with uh, three little Technic pins that stick out the bottom. Sometimes the TransClear sticks to the bottom of the head as well. And then you detach the six studs of the engine to the arm and Kevin designed this this model for the subsequent arm on the bottom to just pop away with a couple of pins. Generally speaking, I like to also lay the engines down after the fact. They can stand up on their own, but they do feel super wobbly. And then you just detach the second engine and there you go. That's pretty much all you need to do to move all these pieces around uh, quite easily. This is me handling the engine on its own. It looks like a block. It pretty much feels like a block. There's one little area that might want to like dip up ever so slightly on its connection point, but actually on its own, it kind of looks like the handle of some weird uh, retro lightsaber. Anyways, moving on to the head. The head is very, very strong. The studs connect on both the underside uh, and the overside. The body itself uh, hangs on really, really well. The arms attach to the base quite well. And then now here is the reassembly of the Enterprise. I've got a slightly closer shot of what the underside of the head looks like. You can also see a little bit of that sticker detailing. We couldn't add the giant main detail to the top of the primary hull. And sorry again that my head gets in the way. I'm basically just looking into where to attach those three little pins at the bottom. It's a super simple process. I haven't accidentally broken anything off once during uh, the multiple times I've taken this to different parts of the studios on and off the light table. And for the most part here in the studio, uh, we have so many gigantic, big, and very complex Lego builds. The main thing we want to make sure is that we just don't feel stressed moving our creations around. I still get uh, a little bit of goosebumps when I move around the original UCS
ATS Star Destroyer. And as long as you follow the steps I'm pointing out here, it takes about a minute, especially if you know the model well, you could probably do it even faster than that. Uh, just taking these, uh, the head and the two sides off, this model becomes a very simple and easy thing to move from A to B. In case you couldn't tell or you just want me to spell it out for you, this is not a swooshable mock by any stretch of the imagination. But interestingly enough, this is one of the models that has the fewest small breaks. And what I mean is absolutely nothing small has ever broken off any of the times I've handled it after it's been completely built. So anyways, I believe that is everything I want to say about this model for the episode. Remember, if you want to build this gigantic awesome creation for yourself, the building instructions and parts list can be found at our web store. That's www.brickfault.toys. It's also linked in the description below. Like always, I want to see in the comments below what kinds of builds you want to see us make in the future. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.